Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sharier and we are going to start our medical ethics session actually. So these sessions will be very helpful for all of you to know the, you know, the pros and cons about the ethics and to crack the exam in very quick session. So without, you know, any delay, let's go and see the very first question. So this is the question number one, as we can see, let me um, take a pointer for you all all right so as we can see like this is a 80 years man is admitted to the hospital with a massive intracranial bleed so it can be in any way elderly person can have a stroke or can have a trophy accident they didn't mention that one so uh, let's just say you know elderly person is having is some kind of uh, stroke maybe an intracranial bleed and he has been placed on in a ventilator because the respiratory failure associated with intracranial herniation. Now that's not a very good news, like intracranial herniation, even after a massive bleed, all right? So the condition is deteriorating. This word means intracranial herniation. The condition is deteriorating. When you try to remove the ventilator, um, there are no respiration, all right? And the patient makes no purposeful movement uh, no pupillary reaction when you shine the light in the eye. So it means um, like, you know, patient is not showing any kind of, um, you know, proper reflex or responses. So because we have some maneuver, like we check the eyes, we, um, we pinch the patient, we, you know, the vocal commands, all right. So uh, there's certainly also, you know, if the patient is awake, we ask them to do some movement. So nothing is there actually. Neither there's no stigmas on the cold caloric uh, question testing is another um, test actually, not uh, always very practical, uh, but for uh, academic side, something you just need to know this kind of test. And cornea reflex absence, this one is very practical. We do it so often. So which is absent and this is not a good news actually. Now, the patient probably is like clinically dead, what you can understand from the ABAP scenario. So he left no specific wishes for the, his care. Now, if you go to those uh, big countries, actually, they, you know, uh, every patient uh, has some kind of a DNR form, like uh, you need to understand this word, like, you know, DNR, that is called the, the do not resuscitate. Maybe you have seen in movies or in real life that, you know, if the patient is in trouble, like the people try to resuscitate by doing the CPR, the shock and all this type of sort. So the question is coming whether you want this maneuver or not, because, you know, often while doing this kind of maneuver, like CPR, and uh, this kind of, you know, stuffs, actually, you know, it also sometimes quite painful, actually. So, uh, so there's like could be, you know, broken of the ribs and a lot of other things. So it depends on the patient's wishes, which we call patient's autonomy. Now, what is the question here? With the above scenario, which of the following is the most appropriate action regarding this patient, okay? Remove ventilator, uh, make the patient DNR, uh, place a nasogastric tube to uh, prevent aspiration, get a court order uh, to, you know, remove the ventilator, do an, you know, um, EEG. So EEG mostly we do for some other purpose, not really here. So you were getting 10 seconds. So you're getting 10 seconds to think about this question, then we will show you the answer. Okay, 10 seconds is up. So the revealing the answer, so for this one, our answer, so answer of the question was, you know, remove the ventilator because there is no such uh, DNR form for the patient that, you know, uh, about do not resuscitate or even that kind of thing. And the patient is not showing any kind of, this is not really a direct question about the DNR. DNR I just brought because you should know about the DNR because um, sometimes it's clearly written, do not resuscitate or thing, but since nothing written and also the patient is clinically dead, so probably, you know, you 
probably can't do anything at this point. This patient meets the criteria of brain death, which I'm telling the clinical death, no reflex, nothing, no stigma, the caloric test they mentioned. So nothing is so his brain dead. No hope on recovery in this segment. The EEG, so the previous option which you have seen, the EEG, we usually use it for some other, uh, you know, Caesar and for the other. So this is not a useful test actually at this point. So this is out. And uh, as you can see, although heart has continued to beat, it's very common if you continue the machine, the heart will you know, keep beating. Uh, when a patient is dead, you do not need to seek court or ethics committee approval prior to the stopping all the therapy. Actually, we actually don't go to court actually if unless complicated thing happening between the family members. All right. Uh, when a patient is brain dead, do, do not place an azogastrip tube for uh, feeding or hydrate the patient. Uh, the brain dead patient is dead. Okay, so it would be illogical to place a certain thing like that. So this patient is basically dead. So that's why we're not going to do anything. So remember, although you have the right to turn off the ventilator immediately on a person who is brain dead, you should talk to family first. So this is one of the things to remember here. If you see this question, I guess nothing was mentioned like that. Um, but you know, if that option would have been given, like in a, as a separate option maybe, uh, to, to family actually discuss this matter with the family, then that one's priority would have been come first. All right. So this is one of the important thing, you know, which I under mentioned, but normally let's make the summary. The summary is the patient is clinically dead. There is no such hope like, you know, in terms of the reflexes, uh, the voice command, the everything, uh, the patient is dead, there's no hope. So you can uh, turn off the ventilator actually, but the thing is, you probably need to talk to family first. Since there is nothing mentioned about talk to family first, we will go for removing the ventilator. All right. So this is our question number one. I will bring more questions very soon. So thank you so much. This is Dr. Sharia and have a great day.